JD here, and as you could see, we are back on iRacing once again. And in today's video, we are racing at Road Atlanta, a track that I think is one of my favorite tracks of all time. I used to drive it on Forza back in the day and many other racing games that included the circuit and I think it is one of the best and driving an F4 car around here is one of the most insane experiences ever. It literally feels like you're just on a roller coaster that is not stopping at all. But you can see by the title and many people who've been commenting on my racing videos have told me that probably F4, F3, Mazda's Ferrari Challenge or something like that, I think it's called. The drivers, although it is amazing to drive, but the players themselves are a bit tad on the aggressive side. So, for this video, I really want you to just oh, be honest and so just faster. tell me if you think it's I'm crazy. at fault or anything at all with what you see here. But yeah, I've been having such a great experience doing this, but in some races, it feels like people just literally Shit. are doing a last lap attempt every time and just yeah, a bit no of a disclaimer so and a spoiler a like, I do like to moan quite a lot when I'm streaming and that's why you can so hear me speaking at the same time here because I'm actually planning so to do at least one stream a week yeah, of iRacing I'm actually away right now as I'm recording this but when I come back I will be doing mini iRacing obviously so if you click the join button as well I will be hosting private races with my YouTube members and Twitch subscribers, but yeah, I do like to moan quite a lot when I'm driving, and I think if you're, well, not new, but if you've been watching me for a while, you most likely know that is the case. I like to get quite competitive, but when I'm not streaming or when I'm not driving, I'm pretty relaxed, and yeah, usually after the race, I normally have a bit of a open mind to what's happened here. So you can see we're Getting on the way with go this go. race, and you saw that what we did before 20.5 qualified in I think P5, P6 in this one, and so far so good. So we're just going to slot behind. It's a 20 minute race, so don't need to be taking any risks. And yeah, you can already see one driver has made a, a bit of a mistake, but just allowed the leader to get away. So that's a really, really nice start for him. And yeah, we're just going to sit behind this group and not take any risks because number one thing in iRacing is to improve your safety rating. So you don't want to get any off tracks, you don't want to have any contact. And yeah, that's what you want. But I think the problem is when you're racing in Formula 4 and other categories okay, which are behind, unlocked okay. at a lower class or lower license, a lot of people don't move up through the license. They just stay where they are. And yeah, that usually promotes a bit, a bit of uh, frantic racing, let's say. But as we're coming into here, lap two now, just slotting in nicely, not doing anything at all at this stage. Just see what these two cars up ahead decide to do as we come through it here. Looks like they're going a bit wide, so getting a really good run coming through this section. This section is absolutely ridiculous if you're driving a real car your stomach must be going up and down all the time but then this black Jeez. car thought you makes a mistake we're gonna go around the outside of this green car and is he gonna let's go he's thinking about going to the inside but just breaking a bit later and getting this move done and again probably gonna hear me moaning quite a lot now but uh at the time i don't think well, Please, looking back at this now, back. I think he's Please. absolutely fine. Didn't really show I was faster than him or anything at this stage of the race. Yeah, but see, the leader's two up ahead. Me being in this position, yeah. I want us to work together. But this guy, no, nope, it's going to go for your take, which he's fully oh. entitled to do. But coming into here, yeah, so we decide to let him go. And then just kind of hoping that he has the pace to catch up to the two guys up ahead, as I just said. So... I'm not really going to fight him. I'm just going to slip him behind in the slipstream and yeah, really you never know what just take yeah, it from there. So anyways. currently in fourth place and you can see in the bottom right that my eye rating is going up. So I don't think we've had any incidents so far 
no instant points or anything. You want to keep those down to an absolute minimum. But then the leader has gone off into the barrier. So now we're up into P3, and then the guy ahead of him is now the leader. And I felt like my pace was pretty good in this car, but you can see this guy above behind gets a really good run. But you can see he's not fully alongside yet, but going to his corner. Is he going to go down the inside? No, he doesn't. So he actually gives me a bit of a bump draft, which actually does help me a little bit, which is pretty good. So I thought this guy was probably going to be working with me because now I'm in the slipstream of the guy in second place. And you can see the guy behind is a little bit closer. But I was really hoping that he would maybe think, OK, let's, let's just catch this guy tuck in here and let's see if we can catch the leader. Maybe give it a lap to see what our lap times are like. But as we're coming down into this final chicane, yeah, you're about to see God. just completely outbreaks himself and then takes out the other driver as well. That's a bit risky. And yeah, I just think, why just worth the space. risk? You know, it's just the beginning of the race. That's, you know, it's going to kill your I rate. It's going to kill your safety rating. Please, and then on the exit here, go into turn one, try and get oh, really poor run, but then this guy's just going to get on the inside. So, one little tip for you in F4, if you leave a gap, prepare to be overtaken, make a little bit of contact here, but then go into this right hander. Let's see what happens here. And what is he doing? <laughs> what an absolute dickhead. And yeah, People obviously, brains in this when I'm streaming and stuff, this is nothing new. What is he doing? Love Why is he going down the inside there? <laughs> Love to show the frustration, but we're going to take Thank a little that. look of this replay. And again, please be as brutal as you like and constructive and just flash Cheers out saying bunch. that I need to shut up and it's my fault but we'll give it a go again um yeah maybe I should have just let him go and not defended it so hard but going to start one no I really wanted us to maybe work together he could see I just came off of being in the back end of an incident so maybe yeah I don't know you know he's fully entitled to go down the inside of course but so we let him have this room here and then we actually carried a bit of a better speed around this outside. And then as we're coming to this right hand, there's a blind corner coming into here. And at this point, yeah, we're about to see it again. As we come into this one, you know, he's not even that fully alongside. And, you know, it's going to require me to completely back out of the corner. Like, yes, I could have maybe moved to the left a bit more, but, you know, that means I'm just going to lose like two seconds in one corner. And yeah, we do turn in, so I'm not saying it's completely his fault completely, but yeah, I don't know. Please let me know what you think of that. But yeah, if, if I back out the corner, then I'm literally play, just but... going to completely sacrifice that corner. But yeah, we decided to continue because even if you have an insert, just try and continue. The problem is that's given me some instant points now, which is going to make it a bit harder for me to get the safety rating. You can see this yellow car has run out inside. wide here, so we're going to try and spot a gap on this outside and then... And yet. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. And yeah, that's... What the uh, fuck is wrong I think this one was definitely more my fault, or if not completely my fault, so I, I would say. Came back on the track Even though, the as I said, like on the stream and when you're live, you're... So yeah, we're making letting the frustrations get fields. a bit better of you. But yeah, here he goes up wide. And yeah, this one I think I should have just maybe backed out and let him go. But... I was hoping you'd maybe give a little I bit more room on the outside. Fault, this one, and yeah, you even hear me say here now that I think it's a bit my my fault, but Yeah. Yeah, he kinda he just drifts over to that left Ambish, without yeah, I should, yeah, I should, just expecting me to complete back out of that but side here because yeah, it's not going Yeah, I don't know. There, I think but, that's um that's one where Yeah, yeah I should have just I don't think it was intentional. I just yeah, think should have just maybe just left it. And you can hear me say that I didn't think it was intentional or anything, left. but I don't know. Yeah, it does seem to be in F4 cars uh I think the awareness, it's like people are that's a bit, that's a bit clumsy. wearing blindfolds at times, maybe. <laughs> a little bit. But, yeah, we uh, still continued uh, with this race. Or actually, no, I think we, we ended up just finishing that race, um, coming around at back because we had to get towed back to the pits. But this is actually a practice session that's now the, the for the next the race. Line. And your eye rating and safety rating doesn't actually get affected when you do the hour practice sessions which i always recommend if you want to before you go into an actual racing event where it affects your i rating definitely recommend to at least practice a track and yeah, coming through here we go past this guy and on the exit gets a bit of a better run and yeah we just get kind of 
spun around at the rear, and yeah, that happens a lot um, to a lot of drivers. When I see in practice of these people always getting spun around and stuff as well. Yeah, I don't know if it's because it's mostly rookies and people in D class in there, but it is what it is. But we moved on to another race now, and you can see uh, Otis, Otis Lawrence, well. aka FRA Elite. PC. He's All making right, his go. iRacing journey as well. So starting in P2, and let's see what we can do here. So as the lights go out now, we actually get a really good start. And you can see the guy, Philip, behind has also got a pretty good start himself. So we're going to go around the outside. And uh, let's go into this top one. He just does stand in the oh, inside. Oh, and then we've got oh, contact for the car behind. Okay, and then if you look man. at this red car coming into this right-hander, I leave room. And then he takes and out the guy, guy behind him. So, yeah, it does and seem to be, <coughs> excuse me, in F4, that drivers will just go for absolutely the race is long, 20 minutes. everything at all costs. But you can see from that too, and we've got to try and catch up to Otis and this Philip and yeah, just trying to get into a good rhythm and consistency during the race. And this section it almost looked in the car going for this right-hander. But I absolutely yeah, love driving this track, but it is this section that's really, really difficult. But if you just look up ahead, you can see there's gravel, smoke up in the distance, and that's oh, actually spun, elite. elite spun. Otis Lawrence yeah, has spun. lost the car going through there and oh, shit. just shows that even when he's using the car, off. where on F1 he seems to be like glued to the track, it's really, really, really easy to lose the car here. But we were starting to catch the guy who was leading this race. And we have another guy called Lucas Berry behind who has actually done, I think, a 119 in a race, which is almost like an esports level pace. So a very, very fast driver. And right now, I'm just trying to get into the slipstream as much as I can, but they're going into the when he goes down, tries to go down the oh, inside there. And that is just, <laughs> again, like, drivers are there for, they just love taking oh. risks, but then the leader has gone oh, off. Geez, and man. now we are winning this, this race, out. and that's going to be a straight shootout, as I just said there, myself and this guy. between myself and Lucas. But one thing I've definitely learned when driving this car and on I racing himself yeah, is Really just it's learn when to pick and choose your battles because otherwise you like will be punished quite severely, if not. But coming off this corner here, um, we get a fairly good run, but it's definitely through this sector two that Lucas was faster. So in the first few quarters and in the last chicane, I think we definitely had a bit more pace than him. But we're just going to let him go here and gaining yeah, even when he overtakes, doesn't leave me so really that much be. room on the right hand side. So it gives me a bit of a squeeze and <laughs> I don't know what it is with their four drivers. They just don't really care uh, about the uh, safety rating on the I rating or anything at all. But we're just going to step it behind this guy and see what we can do nice for the rest of this race. But yeah, it felt like he was maybe just good few times quicker to be especially a second sector so we're not going to even try and go for an overtake into this turn one because we've got a nice gap behind so we don't want the cars to close in for no reason you can see go for this section we definitely had a lot more pace going through this turn one and two but then as we enter into sector two particularly when we go down this hill and then this uphill left hander i think it's so easy to lose the cars we saw from elite coming through here yeah, that's where people stay in this time, now. and now we've just got to try and stay in the sip stream as much as possible. And you're actually going through these things, of course, as well. Lucas was very, very fast. So coming up here, just not carrying quite enough with him in speed. And now we've got to try and see Sorry, if we can stay with him for the last two laps. So as we come into here, this is actually the last lap of the race, and the gap was pretty much just staying exactly the same see we've got a pretty nice buffer to the cars behind as well so you're about to see again he's got a bit defensive going deal trying to break the toe but going into the start one this is see look how much speed that we're actually taking going through it here but this right hander is just so blind you just cannot see anything whatsoever and you yeah, just get a little bit of understeer and uh, it's really important to stay on the racing line here otherwise i think the dust and will give you a lot less grip on that outside and they go for a step down they get this 
doing absolutely everything. Oh, must God, be absolutely God. terrifying to drive this in real life <laughs> when you're going flat out over that left hander. And we're just going to try and get as close as we possibly can. Sun blinding our eyes here and oh. trying to get a good run again. Yeah, go a good run. But I don't think we're going to be close enough unless he makes a pretty catastrophic mistake going for his last chicane. I think it's safe to say that he is uh, probably going to take this W here. But yeah, please let them know what your thoughts are with the driving stands in F4, F3. And what formulas would you say are the worst or provide the maybe the best cleanest racing itself? But in terms of my racing so far, I have absolutely loved it. GG to Lucas here, GG to the other drivers. And yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for the support nice. on the videos, and I'll be catching you very, very soon. Yeah. Nice. Peace.